Hey everyone, welcome to the next episode of our FPS tutorial series. Today we are making our pickup system and we're gonna start by making a base pickup script. Pickups are going to account for everything from health, armor, weapons, ammo, all of that. We're gonna be using an inheritance system to do this. That means we're gonna have a base pickup class and then other subclasses within that to extend it for weapons, ammo, etc. So let's start by making our base pickup class. Go into our scripts folder, and we'll count this as environment, but we'll create a subfolder for that, and let's call that pickups. And within that, we'll create our script, and this will be called base pickup. Again, this is our base class, and we're going to extend from an area 3D. That's gonna be the root of our scenes. This is gonna handle a couple of things. First, it's gonna do our classic FPS rotation and also the up and down floating that you often see within FPS games. To handle the floating effect, we're gonna need two private variables. The first to keep track of where we start in our Y position, then a time variable so we can animate that. Within our ready function, we're gonna connect our body entered signal to the on pickup function. And that's gonna check whether or not a player is interacting with our pickup. If it is the player, we're gonna check if we can actually pick it up. We're gonna get into that when we get into our subclasses and then apply the pickup to the player. These two functions right here are gonna be overridden within the subclasses because a weapon is gonna be handled differently than an ammo pickup. For example, if you had an ammo pickup, but the player already has full ammo, you wouldn't wanna pick up that ammo. So we can check for that within the ammo script, whether we can actually pick it up, and then applying the pickup is where we might add to the ammo amount or the weapon amount. So the base pickup script handles if a player is entering our area 3D, it's also handling our bobbing animation and that is taking time. We're adding delta, that is the time per frame. And then we have a calculation to adjust our position Y. And that's taking the Y starting position and then getting the sine value of time times our float speed times our float height. And that's just gonna give you that sine wave. And we can adjust how tall that is and how fast that moves. And then finally, we have a rotation along the Y axis according to our rotation speed. And then we also multiply that by delta. So that's our base script. The bobbing and the rotation are gonna make a little bit more sense after we create our scene. So let's do that. We're gonna create a new scene. We're gonna go down to our scenes folder. Let's also put that in the environment pickups folder and then add a new scene. This scene will be an area 3D node. Select that class and we'll call this base pickup. Let's go ahead and attach the script we just made. Do a quick load, base pickup. We'll have our export variables up there and let's fill out our child nodes for this. So the first thing we can add is actually a collision shape. So I'm gonna opt for just a sphere. We're gonna use a 0.5 meteor radius. Once you put that in, let's adjust our collision settings within the area 3D. So we don't want anything but the player to interact with this pickup. So we need to go down to collision object 3D, hit collision. We're gonna make our layer empty. You could make a pickup layer if you wanted to. There's not really any reason to do that. We just need to detect when the player interacts with this pickup. We want to just mask the player. Now our base pickup won't actually have a mesh within it. We're gonna instance this scene for our weapons and our ammos and everything else, but let's put one in just so we can test our rotation and our uh, bobbing effect. Let's make it just a basic box and 0.25, save that. Go to our prototype level and let's just drag this base pickup into the scene. I'll put it a little bit higher. Okay, now we've got a rotation speed of 60, float high 0.1. Let's just see what that looks like. All right, there you go. Pretty standard FPS style pickup rotation float. You can, of course, change that. I wonder if this will, there you go. So a 0.5, much bigger height, maybe a higher speed. And you can adjust that however you want that to look. You can make it spin super fast. All right, so that is the base pickup. That's our rotation, our floating. Already has a pretty cool effect. Let's get rid of our mesh in the base pickup because we're gonna be adding that for our individual subclasses. Go back to our level, we can 
pop that out. All right, so the first thing that we can create is a weapon pickup. Now the weapon pickup traditionally would be if you pick it up and you don't have the weapon, it unlocks the weapon. If you pick it up and you've got the weapon, it might fill out your ammo completely. So we need to think about that when we're making our subclass. Let's start by creating our weapon pickup script. We'll go back to our pickups folder, create new script, and we'll call this our weapon pickup. Open that up. Let's get rid of that and we'll go through this a little slowly. So the first thing is obviously you need a new class name. We make that weapon pickup and we are extending base pickup. If this is new to you, this extending part, all this means is if we are taking this script as the base of our new class, that means all of this in here is already within our weapon pickup. We're inheriting this script, but it also means we can overwrite some of these things so they are unique to our weapon. And that is what we're gonna do with this. Let's go back to our weapon pickup. We need a couple of export variables. And again, because this is within just the weapon pickup, these are not gonna show up back in the base pickup. We need a weapon slot. If you have done the weapon system video, we have different slots for different weapons as you would with any retro FPS. And then we also have our weapon resource. That's a resource specific to each weapon type. Next, we have the two functions that we need to overwrite. The first is our can pickup function. Just as a reminder, let's hop back to our base pickup, can pickup, we're overwriting this, and this is running on pickup. The player runs into the pickup, it checks whether or not it's the player. If it's not, nothing happens. If it is, we check can pickup. So back in our weapon pickup, can pickup runs. It's getting the weapon data from our managers, weapon manager, and the, the weapon slot within all of our weapons. This is a dictionary that holds all of the different weapon slots that we have. And then we have the logic for whether or not we can pick this up. If the weapon is not unlocked, we can pick it up. If the weapon ammo is less than the max ammo, we can also pick it up. If either of those things are true, hence the or, this is gonna be true. And if we go back to our base pickup, that means we're going to apply it and then we free it. We also need to overwrite this function. Go back to our weapon pickup, and this is our apply pickup function. This is gonna run if we can pick it up. Again, we're gonna get our weapon data for our weapon slot. If the weapon data is unlocked, then we're gonna add the ammo. If it's not, then we need to unlock that weapon and then we need to switch to that weapon. So what's happening within our ammo? So if we already own the weapon, we're gonna refill our ammo to the max. So we get our weapon data. This holds how much ammo we currently have. We set that ammo to the weapon resource. Again, this is the sort of the blueprint for that weapon and we get the max ammo. So that's gonna take the ammo, set it to the max. Now, before we test this and see if I screwed anything up, we gotta make a weapon pickup scene. You could create a new scene and assign the script and do all that jazz, but if you want to make changes to a base pickup and have it affect all other child pickups, we can inherit this scene. If we go to your base pickup scene and right click, you can do new inherited scene. And you'll notice it's got the same stuff as the base pickup. Let's save this scene and we'll call it our weapon pickup. The base pickup is our initial scene. So anything that we do or change within this scene is going to affect this scene. As far as what we're changing is still in this scene. For example, if we added a mesh to our base, we save that that's also gonna pop up in our weapon pickup. Let's go ahead and set a box mesh in there. Save that, and we also have the box mesh in there. If we make a change in the inherited scene, like let's change this to a sphere. If we had a sphere in here, height, there we go, save that. The base pickup is still the box, but the weapon pickup is the sphere. Changes that you make in the inherited scene stay in that inherited scene. But if we made a change to the box, made it bigger, saved it, that's not gonna affect what we have in here because it's different. We can keep that mesh in there and we'll keep our sphere in there and save that. Now we can also take this and assign our new weapon pickup. There it is in our base pickup and we can rename that weapon pickup. Now you could create inherited ones from the weapon pickup if you wanted specific ones for each weapon or however you want to do it. We're just going to drag this into our scene like so and we're going to set, I shouldn't have done a sphere 
You're not gonna be able to tell if that turns or not. Let's go back, change that. Let's make it a, nope, can't see that changing either. No, well, we can, let's do that. Let's do a capsule and let's make it smaller and shorter. Oh, that just looks like a sphere, thinner, make it thinner. There we go. And let's rotate it ever so slightly on X. There we go. And go back here. There's our weapon, looks like a pill. So let's go to our weapon manager. And that's where we have our dictionary of our slots and our weapons. So we have a pistol, we have a shotgun. We've created both of those types. Both of these are set, you can't see that, are set to unlocked. That means the player has them. So if we unclick that for the shotgun, that means we have not found a shotgun yet. Now we can go to our weapon pickup, set that to our second slot, and we'll load our shotgun weapon. Now, before we can test all of this, we're actually missing a function. Now I talked about it, but we haven't actually created it yet. In our weapon pickup, if we don't have the weapon, we need to unlock it. Well, we need to create this function. Let's go to our weapon manager and go to just go to the bottom, wherever you want to put it. And this is the function that we need. We need to do unlock weapon. We need to know what that weapon should be. And our weapon pickup, we're setting that to whatever slot that weapon pickup is and whatever resource that we set. We're setting that to slot two and making the weapon resource shotgun. Now I'll make a note here within the weapon manager. What you typically would do here is obviously all of your weapons would be set up. You wouldn't just keep adding weapons to slots. That would be kind of weird. Each weapon would have a defined slot. I just have two, so it seems kind of odd, but if you had eight weapons, you would have eight slots here ready to go before anything happened in the game. My point is that all of these slots and, and what weapons would go to that slot would already be known. In reality, you don't really need to set the weapon here. I just have it in there as a, if you want to do that kind of thing, but we could cancel that out because we already know what the weapon is. We'll keep it there, but we're just taking the slot and we're unlocking that. And then we're setting our ammo to the max ammo. We'll save that and we already have our weapon pickup in there. It's kind of hard to see. Let's fix that. You could, you could not have any more boring color than gray. Let's just do an emission. There we go. All right, so we don't have the shotgun. I have a pistol, no shotgun. I'm pressing the, the two slot, nothing's happening. And when I run into this, we should get our shotgun. And there it is. And now we have our shotgun and we can switch back and forth between either one. So that's a weapon pickup. Now let's test that we have a shotgun, but we are running into the weapon and so we wanna fill the ammo up. We'll just copy the weapon pickup, slide that over. We'll pick up our shotgun first. There we go, we'll use it. Shoot, ammo is six, kinda of hard to see in the print there. And we'll run into that, ammo refilled. We're back at eight. Seven, six. So that's our weapon pickup. And we're gonna do one more pickup because we haven't done health or armor or power-ups or anything. So we're just gonna do an ammo pickup and we'll do the same process. We'll go and create a new script that we'll inherit from our base pickup. We'll call this ammo pickup. Whoop, almost said ammo Pikachu. Uh, ammo pickup. The logic is, is pretty close to the same. It's not drastically more complicated or anything. So I'm just gonna paste this in and we'll walk through it. Ammo pickup, extending base pickup, check our ammo slot, and then we have an ammo amount. Obviously you could have different sized ammo pickups. You could have small, medium, large. So for our can pickup, we're gonna check if the weapon exists. So we don't have the weapon, why would we pick up ammo for it? The weapon slot is not in our manager weapons, then return false. Just, if we don't have the weapon slot, then don't do anything. Then we need to get the weapon data again for that weapon slot and then check if we have the weapon unlocked and then if our ammo is less than our max ammo. If neither of those things are true, then the pickup is not gonna get picked up. For the apply pickup, again, getting the weapon data for the weapon slot. And then we need to consider how much ammo we actually need to add. There are a couple of different ways that you could do this. This is just the way that I decided to do it. Um, Calculate how much ammo you need to add. We don't wanna go over our max ammo. First, we're gonna check how much space is available. We do that by taking the max ammo and then subtracting our current ammo, and then we get how much ammo we need to add 
by that difference. Then we need to see how much ammo we need to add by getting the minimum between how much ammo we could add and how much we actually need. You could clamp this if you wanted to do it that way. I think I was just thinking about, you know, your max ammo could change. Maybe you increased it by a modification or something like that. And so we're just checking what that difference is between the max and how much you got. If you figure that out, you need to add the ammo and the weapon data. Again, this is the current information for our weapon, how much ammo we have. We're gonna add ammo to add, and then we can just print and see what we did. So that's the ammo pickup. Nothing complicated. Let's go ahead and make our scene. Again, we do that by doing the inheritance. We don't wanna inherit from our weapon pickup. That's not gonna work. We want to inherit from the base pickup. So make sure you don't do that. New inherited scene, call it ammo pickup, and we can rename that. And then for our mesh, I guess this would be more of a box, kinda of like a little box of whatever your ammo is. Let's just set it so we can see it a little bit better. Let's make it red. Save that. That's our ammo pickup. And then we need to attach the ammo pickup script. And this should work as intended. Let's go back to our level, add our ammo pickup, bounce that out. And let's make this for our pistol. We'll add 10, we'll play that. And let's shoot some ammo here. So we're at 10 ammo. I think we have 20 as the max. Pick that up, picked up 10 ammo for pistol, and we're back at 20. So that's our ammo pickup. And if we already have full ammo, we will not pick it up at all. Oh wait, what's our max ammo? I think I have a different setting for max ammo than I thought. Pistol, mo oh, pistol is max ammo of 50. Let's go back to our weapon manager and I think we've set it, yeah. So we didn't even set it to the max. So set it to 50. Now we have max ammo and we shouldn't be able to pick it up. There you go. And we pick up the shotgun and don't shoot. We don't pick that up either. So that is our pickup system. And we've got a weapon pickup, we've got ammo pickup, and the same thing can be done for the health and the armor. And it's about as easy to, to do either of those things. And once we get our, our health and, and armor figured out, soon, then we'll make those. One more thing that I, I didn't include in this episode, and that is tying this into trench broom, because that is a, you know, a, a big deal. You can just drop ammo wherever you want. If you want a, a video of that, let me know. I can just kind of do a quick, quick trench broom addition for that. Otherwise, as always, you can get the source files on my Patreon, and we're going to be moving into enemies and enemy AI within the next couple videos. Really excited for that. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a game finally, something to do. Thanks for watching to all the supporters who are making this series possible through the Patreon. Thank you tons. It helps so much. And we're going to keep on trucking along. I'll catch you next one. As always, keep creating.